Okay, so this um, song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur um, Goswami Maharaj, he has written this wonderfully, talking about how we need to surrender to the devotees of the Lord who has the power to give us Krishna. And also we need to teach, I mean, sorry, not teach, we need to um, learn how to control our the falls, the anarthas, you know, the fault finding nature, and uh, how to improve our good qualities. So, this is the song is talking about all of those things. So, if we look at it in a holistic approach, when we talk about overcoming psychological distress in itself, is a big subject matter. And then the another subject matter is bhakti. And then when we combine together, how to overcome psychological distress in bhakti which is a very interesting topic because many of us think that bhakti is, um, or may, many of us expect, and which is true, uh, what we expect is bhakti is pleasure-giving activity. And what we don't understand is pleasure-giving activity for Krishna, and we are the one who are assisting, uh, you know, assisting um, our mind, body, and senses in serving Krishna. Because we think the pleasure giving or pleasure taking approach is for our own self. That's where the problem comes because we don't understand what is the common ground there. So when we don't identify who we are trying to serve, what is our higher purpose, then there is a discrepancy between our reality and expectation. Then that's where we find this, this all this distress, distress so-called worry, anxiety all come from. Okay. So now we are going to officially move on to the topic, mind. So when we talk about mind, but before we go that, um, Ayushi, may I suggest you to keep the time and let me know, give me a thumbs up or heads up saying I'm going over time or something like that. Or when we approach the time mark, let me know so I can manage finishing it up earlier hmm? because we started late a bit. <laughs> Apologies. No problem, Ataji. Today we have full day time because we are starting in the morning itself. Oh, okay. All right. Nice. Very nice. It's very nice to see you all being very enthusiastic. Maybe I should learn from you all how to be more active in bhakti. So I'm very glad to be part of your association. And today is our Snana Yatra happening in our Brisbane temple. So, yeah. So it will be in probably in a couple of hours here. All right, thank you. Now, with the mind, so most of us think mind is the culprit, don't we? Mind is the thing that is torturing me. Mind is the enemy and everything. Well, we are very clever. We use the mind to fulfill our desires and everything. And then we blame the mind. And we say the mind is that mind is, well, come on. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita very clearly, mind is like, can be your best friend or also enemy. We hear this all the time from the devotees, uh, you know, time to time. They repeatedly tell this. Um, but still what we do is, uh, oh, mind is my enemy or mind is something I can't control. Yes, it is hard, but by practice um, and training, that's what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, we can train the mind in whatever way we want it to be. Um, Next, uh, maybe I just minimize this so you can all see. All right. <clears throat> the worry. So when we talk about the worry, the worry is caused uh, by whatever factors, but it can be in three different platform. It's on the three different platform. One is healthy worry. And then there is another unhealthy worry. And there is transcendental worry. So when we talk about healthy worry, say, for example, in this picture, if the child gets hurt and immediately the father becomes worried and he does what he has to do, which is a healthy worry, you have to do it. You can't just, you know, um, deny the fact that oh, I have to take care of my child or you just um, don't, don't care about the situation and avoid it. No, you won't do that. That's not healthy, of course, but that worry, whatever you are experiencing or feeling because your child got hurt which is a healthy worry like that when your exam comes you will be worried naturally it is okay so the stress or the worry in a lower dose is very uh, much recommended and we needed it and we get it whether we like it or not 
that will help us to uh, get organized. You know, when we get stressed, some people when they get stressed, their adrenal, ad adrenal, uh, adrenal, uh, adrenal. I, oh, sorry, I'm just blabbering. Adrenal um, starts to pump up so much. Then you, some might need to go to the toilet, or some might need to get fresh air. Some might need to take a deep breath. Some might uh, some might need to talk to somebody. Some uh, might not want to talk to anybody. So it depends on the individual personality. We deal with our um, the worries, mm, the stressors. So the next unhealthy worry is something that you anticipate or you just imagine that something is going to happen and uh, you're worried about it. See, first of all, this material world is the Kaliya Mashas for them, 8.15, Bhagavad Gita. So whether Prahlad Maharaj says in Bhagavadam also, whether you work on it or not work on it, you automatically get your um, enjoyment and suffering based on your piety and impiety. Therefore, you don't have to work hard for that. You don't have to endeavor too much for it. It's not that you don't work, but you don't, too, you don't do too much for it. Right, that's the point. And then there is transcendental um, worry, like, oh, I have a service to go to now. I need to uh, say, for example, sometimes you need to prepare a poster uh, for an upcoming event. And now you need to sit down and make the poster. Now you're too anxious how to get it uh, look better than last time, or how do you make it look fantastic and easy to read and everything. You know, you, you bring up all these ideas to put things in the poster, but if it doesn't turn out very well, or you take it to your superior for an approval and they disapprove and suggest you to make another one, and then there is an anxiety there. It is transcendental anxiety. I'm not going to address here whether it's good or bad, but you, you will get it. Okay, so that's the point. Now to deal with anything, uh, this type of worry or distress, first of all, we need to be compassionate towards two um, things. One is your own self, um, and the other one is the other living entities. When, you, when you're being compassionate towards your own self, that's where you take uh, self-care more seriously. You take care of your health more seriously. Serving the deities um, is important, but what is equally important is serving your body to be fit to be able to serve the deities nicely. So say, for example, you exploit your body, you abuse your body, you work too hard, too much. Yes, it is service. Yes, uh, there are good things you're doing, understand. But what happens sometimes we forget about our own self and we overdo it. And then we end up exploding at one stage saying, oh my God, I can't do it anymore. I'm done. So this is not where we wanted to get into. So you should be able to learn to say no, which we always hear from this corporate world as well. So you should be able to learn how to say no to some services or some activities when you think you might not be able to fit that into your schedule, right? But if you are a good organizer, if you are very much um, capable of managing your time very well, then I would suggest, yes, go for it. Take challenges and do it. But some people, um, they don't like to even do the normal shows um, because they, they are set up their mind with the comfort zone. They don't want to do it any more extended factors. Uh, they or everything they want to do within their own little nest. But some people, um, in, my, in my case itself, for me, I like challenges and I like to go up, uh, above and beyond my time schedule to fit anything and everything. And of course, I will also learn, uh, not I will learn, but I also learned from my husband to say no. Uh, again, not saying no in a rude way, of course, you're saying it in a polite way or giving them options. Say, you can't do this job, whether you're at work or you're at school, uni, or at service, wherever you are, you can't do that. You can't take up that particular role or an activity. Then what you would be able to do is instead of saying, no, rudely, you can offer them some other alternatives. Say, for example, yeah, that's a good idea. I love this opportunity. Sunday, great. But how about we do this following Sunday? Because this Sunday I have some pre-schedule. I'm working on this, which is a priority at the moment. 
how about we do this next Sunday? At work also, sometimes you might not be able to say no at work because you, you know they're paying you. So you have to find time they would expect, but still you can work around. At work, you know how to juggle around. Um, end of the day we pray to krishna how to manage everything okay it's not that we are great at everything we are learning we always continue to learn and uh, you know in eternally therefore there is nothing wrong with trial and error either if you if you made a mistake by giving them the option and they come back with the <laughs> option that is not conducive to your situation then yep yeah, you're learning that from that mistake you made so things like that okay but being compassionate to yourself is more important first of all because serving your body is the best service you could do to, to krishna of course krishna lives as paramatma in your heart in everyone's heart therefore your body is matter of fact it's a temple and therefore we should be taking care of that first that, that's where we are very much lenient and very careless about when it comes to us we we give our love and devotion and care and everything to others but we are but we, we are not being selfish to our own self um to one extent uh, you know so that's where we need to learn so when we start with the worry uh, which is a component of a mind and stress is a component of the body and the worry leads to stress and then stress leads to anxiety which is a component of the mind and body and then the panic um you know you become fearful of the facts and you get panic attack or you can't function anymore things like that and then there is depression then that that that's where we should it end up at because of course if we have ended up already that's fine we can always recover from it we can always reverse the situation whatever it is but if we end up in there then it would might need cl clinical treatment right so So here, let's see, um, that's um, psycho in psychology, there is a study done, conducted um, with a dog, and it is called Seligman theory. And when there was a dog kept in a cage with the fence or barrier um, built, and the dog was allowed to pass through the barrier, and it was firstly safe to do so, and there was no problem. And then the psychologist uh, you know, imposed some electric shock on the barrier, when the dog try to pass over the fence it it got the electric shock and then it, it started to get this mental agony the stress factors and it was wondering why this is happening and then it, it when it, when the dog kept trying to pass through the barrier every time there was an electric shock then the star the, the, the dog started to feel very depressed so we think of depression or the stress factors only applicable to the human beings but it's not even then when there was a study conducted to the plants and there were three different kinds of plant planted at the same time and they were watered at the same time at the same amount and then they were provided food or whatever the plant food they provided to all three at the same time in the same manner however there was one little difference was the person who was treating the plant or growing the plant of each plant has different persons and they um uh, kind of uh, you know there are two actually two different studies one was with three plants the other was with two plants with three plants they put the music one with mode of goodness but of course they were not devotees and they didn't know that mode of goodness or passion or ignorance but they simply put the music that we know that is in mode of goodness and that is the music in mode of passion the mode of ignorance and the plan the size of growth were tremendously um significantly high in when the plant was treated or looked after in the mode of goodness whereas the mode of ignorance the music was so damn bad and therefore the plant was started to die and then eventually it died so that that's one thing right that's one study showed how the sound vibration is more important that's one study there was another study conducted between two plants no, like with the two plants and again the same um characteristics everything the same like watering were giving food everything in the same manner same time but the difference was the one plan was treated by a person who was so abusive so verbally abusive and telling all bad things about the plan and you're not good you're not great you're just so bad why are you looking like this you're ugly so all these negative words made the plant feel bad and it got depressed and then it died eventually 
Okay. On the other hand, the plant, the other plant was given so much nourishing words, beautiful words. You're so beautiful. You're lovely. Look at you growing. Um, aren't you beautiful? So those positive little words, um, you know, elated the plant and it started to grow nicely and it, it just started growing nicely and taller and everything was perfect with that plant. So from that study also we understand that what is important there is positive mindset and we have this needs of hierarchy by Maslow another psychologist um, so we, we have here physiological needs starting from the bottom where you need all this food water shelter you know you need clean clothes and sleep of course you need breathing fresh air everything the basic needs for your body hmm? And then there is safety and security. For your family, you need to give support. And for your own self, you need a job, those type of things. And then love, of, love and belonging is where you, it, you need more of that because we all need the sense of connection between one another or amongst one another. And you go to the social, when you go to a social group or gathering, you expect you are one of the primary persons there. Sometimes you want to be the primary person, you know, a very important person, like we call VIP, right? Very important person. So these expectations also make us fall sick mentally because that expectation might not be met all the time. Then there is a feeling of a disappointment and then there is detachment from you know, being connected to the loved ones or the social group. That's when you withdraw yourself from the society and then that ends up in depression also. And there is self-actualization, self-estimation, uh, sorry, self-esteem is something about your own confidence and expecting um, someone, uh, expecting others to respect you also. And you want it to be unique in nature as well. And um, self-actualization is very important because it talks about or it is about you and you realizing your growth potential, the growth factors, more than you accepting or working on your uh, defic deficiency. Okay, so you're more focused on how to improve your skills. For example, you're good at Murudanga, uh, then you work on it. Oh, how can I improve that further? But when you are not good at something, you're not sitting and worried about it or just focusing on just oh I, I'm not good at singing right so I'm not sitting and worrying about it oh I'm not good at singing what do I do I'm not good at singing I don't even think about what do I do about it but I just keep worrying about it which is not helping anyway right self-actualization means you pick up the good qualities on you and just enhancing it further hmm? All right, so the next, with the psychology, we treat um, this psychological distresses uh, into popular methods, uh, two popular therapies, you could say. One is cognitive behavioral therapy, the other one is interpersonal therapy. So cognitive behavior therapy is nothing but your cognitive, that is your thinking mindset, um, you, behavior, you know, thinking behavior needs to be changed there. So when we change that, even you shift the paradigm of from one, you know, one um, place to another, then automatically how you act will make the difference as well, correct? So for example, in this um, slide, picked up the example of, say for example, you're looking for a job online and your computer decided not to work anymore, just shuts down and you become, frustrated naturally, right? See, when you are very uh, content, ma matured, you would just start working on it. Oh, what's wrong with it? Let me work on it. If you notice someone driving with you who really get this kind of um, emotion very quickly, when they drive, for example, you're sitting next to them, they're driving the car and there is a problem there, simple problem. It's not a big problem at all. Just someone, just passing um, you, passing you, but they didn't put the indicator, for example. They didn't put the right indicator, but they just changed the lane and then come to your lane and you now got frustrated. You could handle it in two ways. Everything can be handled in two ways. One in a good way, one in a bad way. Good way for your own self and others and the bad way for your own self and others, correct? So it, it depends on your maturity level. You will act on it. 
And Chaitanya Charan Prabhu once said, once said, you respond, you don't react to the situation, but rather you would respond to the situation. So there is a dis difference between re respond and reacting. Reacting means without the emotional or rational intelligence, you just react, right? Um, something went wrong, you just reacted it, which is natural. But when you have higher maturity, you'll find those people with higher maturity, they don't react as much as you would or I would, correct? So when the car passed you uh, by and then they didn't put the right indicator on, then this driver started to yell at this other driver saying how uh, dare he is and he didn't even turn on his indicator. He's just going like as if it is his road or his father's road, et cetera, et cetera. We just start and you'll be thinking why this person is so emotional and he is angry and he is yelling at the other driver who can't even hear what he's talking about. He already passed on, he moved on and he is not in your life. He was not in your life and he will not be in your life. Why are you so much emotional? Why are you becoming so angry? And you're wasting your energy. For eight seconds of anger, the doctor says, eight seconds of anger your body goes through that will cause lot of chemicals to produce in your body that needs to be eradicated from the body that because they are toxic chemicals it will take about eight hours to get out of your body just imagine you have done something eight for eight seconds which is which is nothing in this material world eight seconds is nothing right and you have to go through or your body has to go through to recover from that mental distress uh, to normal state of mind right? It has to work for eight hours. Say, for example, you are working on a computer, you're working on an Excel file, and uh, you made a mistake, and it's just you've done it in within a matter of seconds, but now you have to fix it. Your boss told you to fix it, and it will take you another full working day to fix. How do you feel? Would you be happy about it? I don't think I will be happy about it, but yeah, we, we have to sometimes learn those mistakes as well. And the interpersonal theory is about, say, for example, you have a challenging relationship with a particular person, then you work with them um, or with or work with your psychologist um, to how to set a boundary between you and the other person who is very challenging in your relationship. And then how do we overcome that situation? That is interpersonal relationship. And we see the signs also where sometimes we tend to ignore the signs, we, uh, the signs like, not a medical science, I'm talking about signs, like symptoms, emotional symptoms, and there is physical symptoms. So, excuse me, the emotional symptoms, like personality, you're changing, uh, changing of your personality, some people would pick up on your symptoms and say, oh, it's not like you, why well, well, are you behaving like this differently this time? Something like that, you know, sometimes you get feedback from others, but sometimes you yourself notice. And ironically, when we chant and continue to chant every day, and when we try to focus on our chanting and pray to the Lord, you will identify all those signs or symptoms or whatever that falls, the anathas that you manifest, your mind manifests or you manifest, uh, whether through mind, like karmano, manaso, uh, then vacho. So either by activity or by mind or by speaking. Hmm? On these three uh, elements, one can manifest their emotions, right? Or, or thoughts. Whatever they have in their thought, they can just speak it out or they just start thinking about it uh, or you just just behave behave it in a way. You know, how um, this Muni, um, it's not Dhruvasa Muni, but Brihumuni, yeah. When Brihumuni wanted to test who is the Supreme Lord, uh, he wanted to test Lord Shiva, Vishnu and uh, um, Brahma. Then he went to everyone separately just to test their level of the godly nature. Of course, Krishna is the Supreme, we all know that. But again, this is a pastime. We just learn the correct essence in the past time we shouldn't too much analyze or anything just learn what what is it that i can learn from it what is the matter or the point or two that i can learn from it so from this story I, i'm sure you might have all heard of the story many times so just to give you um overview of it so he goes separately to each individual brahma shiva and vishnu and 
with brahma he made the offense with um mind he he did not um offer obeisances so therefore brahma was insulted he was offended and when we went when he went to shiva shiva offered him, him you know the embracement but he ignored brigamuni ignored and saying oh you're coming from the cemetery and you're dirty your body is full of ashes i'm not going to touch you so that was offense made uh by by not through body but through uh, speech mm, pacho and then there is with vishnu when he went to vaikuntha loka he kicked the chest of lord vishnu uh, then were, of course lord vishnu uh, patted his um, brigamuni's feet and said oh i'm sorry my chest is so hard it might have hurt your little lotus feet uh, let me give you a massage um so so that, that is vishnu of course you know he is always renunciate fully renounced uh, and if we were in that position we would have got angry and upset and everything uh, but the lesson learned from there is how one can offend physically mentally and through speech also that's what brigamuni did with vishnu was physically he kicked um so these are the things we see with us also how our anarthas manifesting right uh, and then there are symptoms from the stress also we will uh, have to identify sooner or later or do we have sometimes google doctor what he does or google acharya what he does giving us we giving us too much information we don't even have those symptoms or sometimes we might have the symptoms for whatever for dehydration we might be like a feeling like a headache or something and then when we google it and then it will give you a lot of things a lot of things that you don't even need to know and it will take us up to the level of oh it could be a cancer or something severe brain tumor so this is how um, we we get more stressed so we should try to avoid too much analysis on things sometimes as well sometimes you can treat the symptoms and of course you have to treat the root cause but this is to give an idea only it's not about oh let me interrogate myself do i have these symptoms do i go through this or oh, no i am having the depression then that's the conclusion no it's not for that just to give you an idea uh, <clears throat> the statistics done and uh, interestingly um the higher level of stress was due to the drug abuse like when we take the drugs alcohol or some other drugs and the lowest was uh, this is like a perceived cause for mental distress these are the these are the reasons or the causes perceived causes it could not be actual but it's perceived causes um the medical was the last or the least um reason and the topmost was the substance abuse interestingly we have this yellow box or a yellow rectangle here in a vertical way that is divine punishment or god's will so thinking about that also we get stress so there you go so we have to address everything right i'll come to that again how do we analyze to some extent and this psychological distress in the top uh, sorry the bottom box bottom rectangle is from australian statistics not from indian or worldwide it's only for australian one and you under you should understand this fact as well compared to india um a lot of uh, youngsters naturally or distress even extras or old people older people doesn't matter naturally people are more distressed in western world um than in india okay one is india is holy dam about the bhumi is like um, punya bhumi so therefore always there are pious things happening and you get to see them then you get sukruti for that just for seeing or hearing uh, but in western world the chances the opportunities are very slim therefore to recover from the mental agony through the spiritual course is very hard unless krishna is or god's representatives or ad addressing those factors and helping the fallen souls like us so 15% of australian experience a high level of distress and out of that if you look at it the women are more distressed than men that's because we think a lot we do multitasking we think too much and uh, we like to th to have things perfectly done perfectly made perfectly delivered but there's a big perfection disorder is also another factor but even if we don't have those factors still we tend to have higher stress level because we have higher expectation you know sometimes um when i tell my husband something or how i felt about something that happened 
then he would say oh, i didn't even think of it from that perspective at all he wouldn't even have the time or energy to think about the level of way how i think and perceive things and he would just least bother about few things but some for uh, some cases where the men are more stressed on their uh, giving security or protection to the family hmm, and have the job security so those sections they will be stressed naturally uh, like paying off mortgage or uh, keeping up with the mortgage for example not even paying off the mortgage but keeping up with the mortgage and uh, catching up with the debts uh or you know uh, just you know survival um you know this you know survival uh factors the basic factors they might be worried about but with us uh, if i look fat in the mirror i'll be worried if i look ugly or if I, if someone says that why you look very dull today then i get this depressed you know what i mean just examples um or someone say um you're great you know you're doing such a wonderful job and you are just flying in the air so these things easily affect us but with men hmm they're okay uh, but because they they don't express too much they are not designed to express things too much but we are therefore the stress levels are there because stresses are directly connected with this expression so the emotions hmm and again uh, the statistic shows the younger australians more likely to experience a higher level of stress psychological distress than older australians so it, regardless whether in india or australia or any other western world or any any part of the world youngsters um like i am saying not in villages uh, villages they are happy farming and doing little simple things see if we are content and happy with what we have then we are we are good we don't worry about it anything and the second section here in this slide the second middle section is so important if if you can remember this the rest of your life please do that um because it will help us to be alert in our activities also <clears throat> in the, in the developing countries or the countries that have more educated um number of people there the stress or distress is higher in youngsters because they worried about social peer pressure social media pressure and then um job pressure if you have work you have work pressure if you don't have work then pressure because you don't have work you need to find a job so these pressure or too much uh, affecting the younger people in general because they think oh, i have a higher things i have or people have higher expectations on me so i have to meet that that automatically give you stress right if you take it if you're taking things easily you don't worry about it too much so next this slide is talking about how we look at things in a spiritual perspective so far we were looking at what is stress what are the symptoms what are the causes and some statistics and also we saw how psychologists treat those symptoms right in two different methods now we are jumping into mat from material perspective of dealing things to spiritual things so when we understand spiritual things which is the which is understanding the whole picture or, you know not just some part of the picture when you understand the entire picture then it is very easy to address our problem where we fit in there so cause we all know this right three problems we have three reasons is adi aatmiha adi deviha adi baudhiya so that is uh, this agony caused by our own body and mind or by other living entities other living entities could be even the viruses bacteria and mosquitoes and other like neighbors and what not and deviha is um, natural disasters or the things that are not in our control so we if we understand that okay the problem that i have is caused by what most of the time is adi atmiya to be frank right most of the time our mind will trick us and then we follow the mind and say oh well this is what i should be doing when you shouldn't be doing that now coming to the eight elements it is given in shrimad bhagavatam these eight elements when you see for example um gauranga prabhu gauranga das prabhu he uh, he 
repeatedly tells this. He is happy because out of these eight elements, all he has to worry about is Atma, the body. Because 90% of the other factors are eliminated from his um, um, from his life, lifestyle. Therefore, only 10% he has to work on it. So he is not worried about it. Even with the body, he has feed the body, take care of the body, which can be done easily because you don't have nine other jobs to do. You only have one job that just that. And then, of course, with the body, what do you do? Serve the Lord. That's his main focus, of course. But with the material elements, uh, you know, we have body, atma, jaya, wife or husband and sutta, children, ahara, house and um, pasu, animals with the olden days, of course, but these days we don't care, you know, keep pasu and only vehicles we work for. And then dravida, money and bandusu, acceptance from the society of friends and relatives and con next rajya, controlling over one's career or progress. So because we're always working on these eight elements, we're always worried. Right. When we try to minimize some things, and of course, if you have children, you can't get rid of children, of course. But if, and if you have a wife, you can't get rid of her. And but the point that we are trying to learn from here is simple, keeping it simple, keeping it simple. I tell my parents, keep your life simple, because when they spend luxuriously for luxurious things, without having that luxurious amount of money, but borrowing money and then showing others that you're being luxurious what, what's the use this is what most of the people would do or try to do to impress others with what you don't have so you don't have to do that right whether it's materialistic way or spiritualistic way just keep it simple if you are good at nothing that's fine as well but krishna has created us with some talents it's not that you're good at nothing Everyone is good at something. You might be good at cleaning. I might be good at talking. I might be good at, um, to, you know, making friends. Or I might be good at uh, introducing one to another person who might help. Instead of me doing everything myself, I can refer that person to another person who could help this person better than myself. So we need to identify what we are good at and then work on that, just keeping it simple. Not, okay, oh, did, did they accept me? Uh, did this group accept me? Um, you know, if we all, we worry about every factor, then we will never be happy. And then the types um, of uh, the distress that we generally face also created stress. So you're going out of comfort zone. Okay, you're going out of your comfort zone and then you're creating some stress there. It's not that you purposefully created a stress but the stress has been created just because you're out of your comfort zone and then perceived stress is like there is a stress and you're perceiving it in one way okay so there is a you have a child and uh, you think a oh, child means i can't do this and that and uh, now i'm miserable because now i have to take care of my child only i can't take care of myself these are perceived stress because things you can always uh, mix and match and how you wanted to manipulate things and how you wanted to deliver things, right? How you wanted to uh, care your child and yourself, and etc. You can do that. But you, when you perceive in such a way that it becomes stress. And artificial stress is sometimes you talk about something and someone else is telling their stress with their situation, then automatically you create that artificial stress. Oh, maybe I also have that. Now you, you become stressful as well. And then there is actual stress. That, that that comes naturally anyway, so which you would know. So you need to be able to identify that as well. And we know this is all because of this permutation combination of three modes of material nature. And when you put red light um, in the white paper, you see the red picture. And then if it, is, if it is a blue light, you see the blue picture like that. You see which mode of material nature you are. And of course, you we can't be always in that mode of ignorance or goodness or passion. You will be on different levels. Sometimes more goodness and little passion, more ignorance with little goodness. You might have all those different combinations, but you need to make more, you, you need to take more advantage of when you are in the higher modes of material nature and then try to extend that as much as possible. And then again, you when you come down to Tamaguna, that is that is fine, but again you work on it to go back to 
Satoguna, for example. And generally, we are all in, um, most of us try to be in Satoguna in the morning times, right? <clears throat> And then there is controlling nature. We know this um, left side, which is very popular joke, you, you say, and even um, another devotee, he often says this joke as well. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah, I can't remember his name. He's very popular. And uh, he says, um, actually, this is there. It is a popular joke. Do you have a problem? Yes. Can you do something about it? Yes. Then why do you worry? And if you have a problem, I mean, if you don't have a problem, and then what, why do you worry? So if you have a problem, you can do something about it or not. You can't do something about it. Still, why worry? So that's the point we are trying to make, right? So you don't worry about it. Just be happy. Um, and the next one is um, this, um, the tea that you cannot swallow uh, is reality right we, we can't accept this reality sometimes and um, as i was saying you th you think you're so beautiful and thin and everything you know when you look at the mirror say for example you have a mirror that always showed you very slim for example and then you go to another mirror from your friend's place and it show you uh, look fat or chubby then you become very upset oh my god what, what's happening here then you feel miserable that, that means you can't accept the reality. So these little things make us feel miserable. And then there was a joke. Um, you need to be uh, like a pressure cooker. Why? Because the pressure cooker always, you know, when it is sitting on the fire, top of the fire, his, the pressure cooker's bottom is on the fire. And the top of the pressure cooker is full of pressure. Mm? So much pressure. But still he whistles. Right? So like that, we should be able to do that. <laughs> so... Um, and now immunity, we need to, all of us need to develop immunity, right? We have to immu develop immunity physiologically uh, with the body. You take whatever, the, I'm not, I'm not uh, with vaccination thing, actually, I'm, I'm against vaccination, but generally speaking, um, you can take whatever, you know, ginger, turmeric or something like that, or protecting yourself from the, um, or like, the bacteria virus or toxic people for example toxic atmosphere example like that so you create this physiological immunity and then there is psychological immunity like when I mean, people if you look at the first picture different clouds is just poop, you know putting all those rubbish onto you like that people laughing at you or yelling at you so these the immunity like an umbrella you need to create for that you need spirituality Right? You have to be in the path of spirituality. You need to keep Krishna in the center. Then your physiological and psychological immunity can be taken care of because you know how to you know, take care of your body because you need to serve the Lord with your body, serve the Lord and the devotees with your body. So your body needs to be nice and healthy. Um, so you will make sure it's immune to all these diseases and uh, toxic people and everything. Um, and psychologically as well, as I said. So keeping Krishna in the center will give you spiritual immunity always. So quickly check the chat. Okay. All right. So we need to go to the question and answer session. Um, maybe we quickly cover what I've got. It's almost done. That's okay. Just one or two minutes. So Bhagavad Gita, you want to look up um, Bhagavad Gita, what, what, what it says about distress, that it mainly it talks about this depression thing to Arjuna, Krishna talking this to Arjuna. So give up this petty, petty weakness and rise above. And then uh, there is some like winter and summer, the happiness and distress come and go. Therefore, you need to build up your immunity there. And Bhagavadam also talks about distress. See, advanced devotees welcome the distress. Mm -hmm. and uh, learned devotees they see the distress as another form of the lord and also pu purificatory process and krishna gives us distress to relieve us from mrityu samsara and uh, this distress is also an impetus to remember krishna these are the things we need to remember and also the most important thing is it is diminishing my reactions of impious activities because you're not getting distress out of nowhere. It's because of karmic reaction. But when we are burning that reaction, it's 
getting out of our way now. We are, you know, minimizing our baggage. And uh, Prabhupada says, um, don't expect smooth sailing in this world. And we know so many examples of how Mother Kunti, Prahlad and Guru Maharaj, all they faced. And whatever we are facing is not that bad that we should understand. And always use five whys. When you're in a position, you're distressed, five whys, inter iterative, inter interrogative technique that is called. So why this happened? Why I'm feeling bad about this? Prabhu or Mataji and then going back further down five whys why is that why is that then you will find out that it's just because if you're anarthas or something else you know and um, yeah summary I already covered it uh, any questions or comments so Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai um, so Hare Krishna so any questions or comments Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Mataji, for this wonderful session. It was really enlightening and, uh, and insightful. So uh, if anyone is having any questions, then kindly raise your hands virtually so that we can unmute you. Also in chat, you can put your questions. Hare Krishna Khushi, you can unmute yourself. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Mataji, Hare Krishna. I have a question that uh, while we are studying and uh, we are in college or we are studying, at that time we feel like hearing lectures or reading Srimad Bhagavatam. So, so what we can do while we think like that and how to concentrate while studying? Wow. <laughs> That's very elevated thought, actually. When I was studying, I didn't. I was not even in Krishna consciousness. I wish I had such a thought. So this is a very positive, conducive, favorable thought, which you shouldn't ignore. Say, for example, you set up a time, right? You organize your time from 6 to 8. You do this and uh, 8 to 10. You do that on a steady holiday. And uh, you want a break. Usually, it is said you shouldn't be eating uh, by doing some some other activity like listening or doing something else but I would say it's okay um, when you're eating prashadam just keep the lecture on whichever you are very keen to hear and just listen and you know do it see most of the times the lectures are recorded online anyway even if you miss out on the live sessions the classes will be recorded but if the classes are not recorded it is live you need to be there then you manage your time that way you make sure you finish whatever you have to do before you can go and attend the class and then come back and make up the time. But again, we shouldn't be, they say, don't be so fanatical about things and um, miss out on what you have to do right now. That is true as well. But again, you need to know how to manage your time better. So for that, I always write down my to-do list all the time. I have my to-do list and I like to tick them off so that I am very happy when I see ticking them off. Uh, sometimes I get stressed as well. Oh my God, I haven't ticked this so far, but that's okay. It will take their own time. Sometimes you're waiting on a parcel from India to here. It will take their own time. You, you, for stressing about, stressing about it will not do any good for us. Like that, um, you need to manage your time and uh, accordingly you see when it fits and where it fits. And if you sit and hear lecture all the time, then you should imagine okay, what will happen if I don't pass this exam? What are the consequences? And then that will give you an impetus, you know, that will encourage you to study well. So you become a good professional. So you can preach to a lot of professionals. And that way you are someone in the market, preaching market, I shouldn't say market, but yeah, preaching um, sphere. So you can do better, but it's not that you have to be a, very big professional to preach. I'm just saying an example to motivate yourself. Does it answer this question? Uh, answer your question? Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much, Thank Mataji. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Next, uh, Ria Khanna, Mataji. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna, Mataji. Please accept my humble obedience. Thank you so much for this session. So, Mataji, I have a small doubt. Um, so, as Krishna says, we are the man prapadyante, that the proportion to be, which we render service to him, we will reciprocate a so, Manaji, as you mentioned um, towards the end of the session, like we have to, there's a lot of pressure. Uh, be, be, 
is not that simple to apply because sometimes um, when we are we are at sadhaka stage and suppose we are helping other others who are also at sadhak stage so um, suppose we have helped them to up to our level best but uh, sometimes what happens is uh, they become against us or they basically gossip about us or uh, spread negativity uh, about us so how can we tackle this situation uh, while remaining ourselves uh, cool like uh, pressure cooker is whistling so we can mm-hmm. be unaffected by all this because it is not that easy to remain unaffected yes Help anyone, and then um, I, I was able to convey. Yeah. So, um, Hare Krishna, that was a nice question. Everyone faces that time to time or always. So, um, it is said in Sastras, name and fame are uh, that will never go. They are like stools that, um, for devotees. Uh, that we should uh, try to avoid them. Because we think we are, we have become an instrument for that person to become better at their Krishna consciousness. Now they are blaming me. So now what we are trying to do here is we putting ourselves in the center instead of putting Krishna in the center. Honor and dishonor come and go. And we are not in the stage of Trinadapi Sunichena, Tarurapi Sahishuna. We are just simply because we wanted to centralize ourselves and we want to be the central element for others also not for our own self but others also because you didn't they didn't meet the expectation mm-hmm. you're disappointed um not you i'm just saying you because it's normal conversational mm-hmm. uh, factor yeah. we use don't yeah. mistake me um so when someone mm-hmm. like because of me that person have come to krishna consciousness now that person has touched me they they just don't care about they're not giving me a respect that they used to give so these all expectations or because of honor that we wanted is not going to help our bhakti right we need to water the sprout the bhakti is proud that is sprouting out because we as you said nicely we are all at sadhaka stage we're still practicing devotees and when we are we have not even grown a plant it's just very much like little sprout coming here and there. And then when we water it with nice bhakti, devotion, like-minded people's association, then it will grow nicely. When someone is saying gossiping about ourselves, we should understand, well, they are the postman. They're delivering what I deserve. That's fine. I. It's not like I don't deserve that. It's like maybe in a previous life, whatever I have done, that's coming back to me now through this person. And that person is creating that infamy because of my past karma. So I should accept it and just tolerate it, just let it go. But sometimes, not sometimes, always we get this, um, the feeling of trying to judge, justify uh, the situation, defend ourselves. No, I have not done it. You're wrong. I haven't done it. So we try to do all those things. Um, but we pray to Krishna, he will solve the problem, okay, eventually, and sometimes immediately. So I had a situation with uh, someone closer to me, and they didn't understand uh, whatever uh, assistance I've done to them materially, uh, financially, spiritually, you know, uh, devotionally, not even just normal spiritual, it's a devotional also. But they just... No, just, even if they yeah. don't reciprocate they don't even know how to appreciate not being grateful that disappointed me so much mm-hmm. i prayed to krishna that's fine krishna whatever they think of me that's fine but just make them understand you are great and uh, because of me they shouldn't leave you and go you know but i'm not that great personality mm-hmm. to tell you i also experienced so many bad negative emotions from me and uh, had negative consequence also but from that experience i'm trying to tell you that please Pray to Krishna. He will solve the problem nicely. If if possible, in a polite, professional way, you can deliver your message, your your side of points in a proper way with the common person um, known between you and the other person to solve the problem, to make the other person understand that the problem not was not caused by you, for example, so that you can have nice relationship mm-hmm. going forward, then go ahead and do it. But if you think it's not worth it or anything like that, then pray to krishna you, know, so you can't even imagine uh, wild enough that how krishna makes arrangement 
that solve the problem not then and there. Okay, prayers mm -hmm. are always there important in devotional life like Kunti Rani, uh, you know, uh, Gajendra and, um, you know, mm -hmm. everyone, the prayers always, the Kardava Muni, Brahma, who didn't pray in Bhavadam? Everyone prayed, right? Like we should be also steal those prayers and pray that back to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Pick up relevant verses for your situation and then just echo it. Does yeah, it answer? Thank yes, Mahajaji, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. There are a few questions in the chat box, so I will just read them. Yes, so, thanks. Uh, yeah, Chitrani Mataji is asking, uh, how to make ourselves wake up early in the morning? So I think questions, uh, answers can be a little, like, uh, not, not uh, time-taking so that uh, yeah. we can end, end up the session. Yeah. yeah, sure. Thank you, Aishi. So, um, yeah, so when you see the pressure given to you uh, by someone, some other Matajis or some other devotees, oh, you need to wake up early, you need to attend Mangala Arti, think about your own situation. What your body accepts Start slowly. Of course, keeping an alarm, is, of course, we all do, but... What are the other chores you have in the morning and in the evening? What time you go to bed depends on the body. Uh, depends on your body. You wake up early. You know, some people go late, wake up early. Some people can't do it. So it depends on your body. You work on that. Don't put pressure on yourself that, oh, I have to do this. I have to do this. You work on it. So start with weekly once and then weekly twice, waking up early. But you have to make sure you get enough sleep. Otherwise, uh, your body will not function during the day. Thank you. Any other okay. questions? Yeah. Anmol, uh, would you like to read? Uh, Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare uh, yes, Mataji. Aishi is asking how, how to overcome perfection disorder, how to overcome negative thinking, and how to overcome being frustrated. Last one, what was that? Sorry, I didn't hear properly. How to overcome being frustrated. Hmm. <laughs> so, see that frustration is all because of expectation right expectation to have something or someone to do this or from our own self or others so expectation leads to suffering that's what sastra say so we don't we shouldn't expect anything we leave the result to krishna we read this time to time but practically applying is where we are having difficulties correct so when we try to have this perfection only krishna is perfect Purnamadam, Purnamadam. Only he can be the fully perfect, fully complete. We cannot be. We can only imitate, right? And if it is favorable for bhakti, we can do it to a certain level. We shouldn't put too much pressure on ourselves saying, oh, I need that hedge to be vertical, not horizontal. You know, if, if you're worried about that, what good it can bring it to you, right? It's so like that, simple things, just no. Perfection only Krishna can be perfect. Understand that philosophy and leave that to Krishna. Whatever you can do, set up the time. I, I, I would suggest all, each and every one of you, including myself, organizing your time is more important. That way, you're not overdoing it or over perfecting it. Okay. And uh, the perfecting disorder, frustration, that will all because of that expectation on you or someone. And what was the second one? Sorry. How to overcome negative thinking? Yes. Negative thinking means we have to think more positive uh, things. Like, uh, for example, to avoid um, disassociation, to avoid material association, you need to have more spiritual association. Like that you need to give something to your mind, your body, your spirit. You can't just take things away. If, you, if you're taking away the negative thoughts, what the mind will do? It will become idle. No, it won't become idle. It will think more negative things only. So you have to give something positive. For that, you need to speak to somebody or hear something, read books, write books. My eight-year-old son, he is writing a book. So like that, because if, if I let him do nothing, he will do something else, rubbish, right? So I want to make sure our mind or our child, it's all the same way, right? So we need to put some engagement. So you need to give engagement, then the mind will do um, that nicely. If we don't do it, automatically it goes to the, like a crow, 
and the swan what it will go where crow will go to the rubbish where the swan will go to pick up uh, milk from the water right like that only where the parrot will go only ripe and nice sweet fruit where the honey will go we see we read this from sastra so we try to practically apply or take counseling from seniors time to time just to refresh our mind to refresh our activities so that is important thank you uh, next question is how to make ourselves motivated self motivated that's a good question so keeping ourselves motivated means you need to hear something motivating do something motivating right and eating gives me motivation um but if i overeat what will happen that's not good even if it is prashadam right so that i can't do <laughs> so you do things moderately and krishna has given us variety like prabhupad has given us variety so cleaning and uh, hearing and uh, watering tulsi and so many activities they pick things you are interested in not because someone else told you to do of course if they need job they need service done do it but do something you can do it with your heart with your mind right then that will give you motivation rather than doing it for someone else eventually you'll break so what krishna says to arjuna why do you want to go uh, live in a forest like a beggar uh, when you are a kshatriya do your kshatriya duty then you will do it with your heart if if you start doing if i say okay okay do it like a brahmana like a beggar and live like that then eventually you'll come out of that position because that is your, not your swarupa so whatever your swarupa do that and get motivated from that for me for example writing books giving classes preaching to new people these are things that motivates me and makes me happy and i get i, I become very happy elated when i do all these things and when i do something cleaning standing i get pain and i can't do it so i try to minimize that service and maximize the other services so balancing as well so that your pleasing krishna should be your ideal goal but we are not into that level yet so therefore we need to work on from the start bottom thank you next and one thing if anyone wants to stay back do that if anyone wants to leave you can leave if have more questions are there i'm happy to sit and answer whereas some people wants to leave early i'm more than happy for them to leave that's fine uh, madhuri can we take some more questions yeah absolutely yeah so uh, vidushi is asking uh, we don't we don't know what's good for our brain and what's yes. not despite knowing we do things which shouldn't be done and that somehow affects the task which are way more important than that so i'm not able to get it okay vidushi is here so does she want to explain last point i i, I didn't get it is it in the chat box um yeah yeah it's there in the chat box okay is it the first question i'll, I'll just uh, I, what what i understood is that we know what is good or bad but then we end up doing something which is not uh, favorable so how to overcome that okay so krishna um uh, when he was asked this question by arjuna why why people do sinful activities even though they know it is sinful then krishna says it's lust only arjuna lust is not only towards the opposite sex but it is also about the deep desire that you wanted to take pleasure out of some activity or something or someone right that's that's lust so when we understand that um the lust is the cause or this is the cause then it is easy to address the root automatically when we identify the root then we can address the cause um so here what is good for us krishna again um arjuna surrenders um shishyate mahi sadhimam prapantam so tell me what's good for me what's best for me um because i surrender unto you therefore we also should surrender to some elevated souls and ask what's good for me right but scriptures tell you naturally we all know what is good what is bad it's not that uh, even children will know what is good what is not good correct it's we can't hide the fact we can't pretend that we don't know we know and if we don't know for particular situation 
okay, what is right? It puts Krishna in the center, the devotional service in the center. See whether this activity that I do is going to be favorable for Krishna consciousness. Anukulya, anukulya sankalpa pradigulya shi varjana. So if it is favorable, take that. If it is not favorable, reject it. It could be relationship or it could be the situation or activity or a atmosphere or a book, for example, anything. But it doesn't mean relationship. And I said that you just don't break the relationship and go. It's It means you take little association from them materially, if absolutely necessary. And if possible, give them more association of Krishna consciousness. One thing we will need to understand for any situation, if you preach more, if you give Krishna to more, Krishna to more people, automatically we will be happy. Okay, some people are good at book distribution, some people are good at preaching, some people are good at, um, you know, uh, serving the devotees or newcomers, whatever you are good at in terms of preaching. Preaching can be done in any way, Ketan or anything like that, or uh, distributing prasadam. Um, if you do keep doing that, automatically you will, uh, Krishna will reveal everything to you, what is good for you, what is bad for you and everything. Paramatma is there, right? How can we ignore? We will get the instinct all the time. Okay, so we have next question from Sakshi. Is that yeah, right? Just last question, yeah. Yeah. We can. So mental health or depression is a curable disease or disorder, but the time we lost Krishna consciousness, how to stay connected with Krishna always no matter what the situation is. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, during mental health or disorder, it is very hard to stay uh, in Krishna consciousness, I agree, because you want your mental to be peaceful. Peaceful, pe Being peaceful will make you happy. So for that, as soon as you identify, I told you, right, five whys, it's an analysis method. Five whys, why this happened, why that happened, why was that, why was this? When you go back further, you will have a root cause. And then you see how you can address it. But if you're not in a situation to do that, take professional counseling. A clinical counseling or someone in a devotee section a sector get some um, help don't don't neglect it just get help and then you staying connected even at the thought of staying connected itself is staying connected so don't have to be literally in the temple attending classes or giving classes or doing bhajan no thinking itself is dhyana bhajan is enough okay in a night of devotion it says dhyana um, the meditation itself is a like a, we know that South Indian Brahmana how he got hurt in the finger um, and thought of um, you know checking the sweet rice that he prepared mentally for Lord Vishnu right so Krishna accepted that so therefore don't worry about being lost but having that desire itself uh, you are connected okay so Aishi so what do you yeah want? thank you so much Mataji uh, for answering so many questions and for giving so much of your precious time. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, people are having many, many more questions. Like they are um, messaging me personally also. So we can have a, uh, we can have one more session on any topic. Um, if you're convenient next time, any Saturday or any day that is convenient for you. So we can have this again. Yeah, definitely. Okay? Ayushi. Yeah, absolutely. I'm more than happy to do it. And thank you very much everyone for tolerating me so far and uh, and happy to share uh, whatever I've learned it's not my own mental speculation or anything so whatever I shared today it's coming from somewhere I heard or le learned um, or read so thank you very much and uh, we'll again uh, see you all and we'll stay connected thank you Hare Krishna thank you Mataji. and uh, you're perfect, welcome yeah. to thank you and you're welcome to copy the questions and whatsapp me I'll send my voice recording yeah yeah so yeah. that they'll get the answer. So I don't want huh. them to feel that they have not been answered. So I'm more than happy to huh. answer in the voice recording separately. Yes, Mataji, I've taken screenshot. So okay. we'll end the session with uh, the mantra, Vaishna Pranam Mantra. Vaishna Galpi Tarubhi Ashta Kripa Sindhu Bhyayi Vajrapati Tanam Bhavani Dhyo Vaishna Dhyo Namo Nama Jaya Jagat Gurushla Prabhupad Ki Jaya uh, Ishwari Lakshmi Priya Mataji Ki Jai. All glories to Guru and Gauranga. Hare Krishna Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Jai. Hare Krishna.